over. Last mission, last mission. The final boss mode. Yeah, yeah, what's good, yo? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where, as always, shit's real, we talk about it. I'm your host for tonight, Pat Scopian, the New England representative, and as always, I got my man with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Yo, what it do, Lauderdale Boss, LB, you know, Shutterworth the God, the GOAT artist, all of the above, you know what I mean? RingGangRadio.com. Oh, yeah, Soul Wars uh, uh, originated, you know what I mean? Yes! Yes, sir. No, I say my own yeses, nigga. Yes. <laughs> my bad, yo. Yes. Green game in the house forever and always. And as always, I got my other man with me. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Aww. What up, what up, what up? You already know who this is. Your boy, King P, Bodega P, Bodega Box in the building. Ring Gang Radio. Let's get it. Hey, Bodega P, straight from the sewer, except he's above ground. He's not fighting the foot clan today. It's Easter. You know, even the foot clan celebrates Easter. At least, at least I, that's what I assume. I mean, I may not be right. Mutant rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a mutant rabbit on Ninja Turtles, though. I'm trying to, I can't remember his name, but yeah. I I, I believe it. I, I'm pretty sure there was a lot of animals on there. Samurai there. rabbit or some shit. Yeah, I, I believe it. I'm, I'm pretty sure there was. You know what I'm saying? But yes, yeah, to, to those who celebrate, happy Easter, you know, happy Resurrection Day. Uh, if, you know, if you don't celebrate Easter, yes, you can pray for our heathen souls and, you know, it's another day for you. It's just another day for y'all. It is. I hope it the is. world experiences a resurrection. And oh, oh, I'm man. living in now. Yeah. <laughs> the, rabbit, the rabbit you're talking about was Miyamoto Usagi. I do remember him. Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm thinking either myself or my friend had the damn action figure. I'm just trying to. I know I my brother. I think I think my older brother had that shit. Yeah. Yeah, we you know, real talk. We know we need we need to have we'll, we'll have to make a discussion on the turtles one day. You know, yeah. that's we need to talk about the legacy of the turtles, bro. That someday I mean, we honor them every week when, when you introduce this nigga. Like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. No, we, we, need, we need a proper introduction. Word, word. You know, because you know, because because that shit raised us. Word up. It's- but some dude in some foreign country somewhere, you know, when he done the list, while listening to the episode, he's on some like, yeah, I gotta, you know, tell my kids about Ninja Turtles. Like, <laughs> like some throwback shit. Let me, let me put on one of the DVDs. <laughs> Stream uh, Ninja Turtles. Facts. <laughs> um, I mean, we did speak about. Did we speak about them? About the movie? I think. Um, now we've I mean we've never done an episode on them. Yeah, either. never official. Yeah, that's true. Well, we will eventually because I think it's about time because you know the turtles like Ring Gang Radio supports the team Mutant Ninja Turtles. We grew up on that shit. And it's yeah. So so yes, we, it will be a future podcast. So watch out for that. Um, so what we're gonna do for tonight though for our tonight show is we got we are gonna talk some boxing you know we're gonna talk our canelo triple g3 discussion and then a retrospective of one of the greatest fights of all time with uh diego corrales and jose luis castillo but before that you know we're gonna get into some music discussion now if you unless you're living under a rock you know there was a, a nice dj battle last night on instagram live between two legendary producers Beat makers. Yeah, you, you gotta specify and say beat makers. <laughs> hey man, this is a different era, bro. <laughs> you know, you don't want somebody to bring in their whole damn A list squad, uh, uh, the, the people who play saxophone and the trumpet, and <laughs> the nigga who sings the vocal sample instead of looping it. <laughs> so, you, you know, you gotta specify beat maker. Yeah. Got to, man. This is Motherfucking new- janitor who was working during the session to come and claim this shit. <laughs> well, you know, them niggas left a lot of pizza boxes, so fuck that. You know, they even shouted me out in the track listing. Like, bruh. <laughs> oh, oh, All y'all niggas can't claim motherfucking that's that beat. Everyone, you know, everyone claims that was just beat. Claims claims each other's beats, man. That's how it is, man. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, we're talking about the battle between DJ Premier and the RZA of the fame group. Or should I say DJ Premier of the group, fame group Gangstar, and the RZA, you know, of the fame group, the Wu Tang clan. Um, 
Jowlin in the house. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, it was about roughly about two hours. And it definitely, you know, I mean, the one thing that I can think of after, during, and after all that was what the fuck happened to East Coast rap? And that's a shout I was texting LB repeatedly. I was like, what the fuck has happened to this shit? Why? You know, like, I'm listening to this beautiful shit. Like, you know, and, and the fun thing how dope it was, it wasn't just what they, what they played. It's the conversation, too, that we're having in between there. Like, you could tell there was some knowledge being dropped as well. Um, LB, man, what, what were your thoughts on it? I love the whole concept. I think it's great for hip hop. It's it's a nice highlight for hip hop. It shows the you, you know, it shows like another, you know, it shows that it shows another era, older era in a newer light than some of the younger fans, so they could see, I guess, what all the fuss about the, all the old head, old heads be making. You know, and you see like all the, the you know the, the names celebrities came out, you know, to witness the battle. I thought it was dope. I don't feel like it, you know, I, I didn't think it wasn't as dope as I thought it would be, though. Like, I, I'll be like, I, I don't think either both played all of their best beats or enough. I feel like you had a lot of, I'm like, God damn, I'm like, do you niggas think this is a hot beat? What the fuck? Like, I, would, I wouldn't put this in no 20 mix, beat mix for RZA or um, Guru, I'm sorry, um, uh, Primo, like... So that shit kind of threw me off, but then I, I I had to remember that, you know, a lot of times producers, you know, they think of their beats a little differently than the person who's hearing them. Like, sometimes they'll have a beat that they'll like, and they'll think it's super dope, and it'll hit you, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I feel definitely... like we got a lot of that. Yeah, I, I feel like it was more about the classic songs that that were being played that they helped produce rather than the beats itself. Cause I was I was thinking about the beats. I was just getting. It into- should be a song battle. It should it should have been Gangstar versus Wu Tang if that's the case. Like, like I almost a part of me was like, man, like, like they should do one where the fans felt like a fan or somebody selects the beats, like. Like that should probably be amazing. Like, cause I feel like they both just kind of gave like maybe fifty percent of themselves. But I feel like Primo's fifty percent is like seventy five percent to them. RZA. Yeah, and like the one thing that I didn't notice from the battle it was like I mean RZA start RZA brought the heat immediately. Primo was just he was not as much although there were classic songs. But I didn't yeah, think and, and even then I felt like he was still ahead of this dude. <laughs> no, but I, I mean I thought Primo once he like up for like like once he played like um I mean even he, I mean he even played Devil's Pie of all songs. Yeah. For me, for me, once he played mathematics, I was in. I was I was all in. I was I was hyped. <laughs> Yeah, and then one thing too is like he also played Big L the Enemy. Now I love that song, but that's not one of Primo's best beats. He should have played exactly. no, that one. He should have played Platinum Plus. That was a better beat. Yes, better thank song. you. Yeah. Same thing. I'm, I'm like, yo, like yo, Platinum, Platinum Plus would have been the better beat. And again, like Enemy, like the fuck. Like, yeah, because no, the Enemy there wasn't nothing. I mean, the only thing that was nice about the song was L, L and Fat Joe were spitting. You know, but the beat wasn't anything. Special. Yeah, but Platinum Plus, uh, yeah, just a whole better song and beat to me, honestly. Like, right? I- I'll take a Big Daddy Kane verse where he just spazzing over a fucking Fat Joe verse. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Kane did definitely did rip that damn song for real. Put it in your chest like a Stockton pass, like yeah. yeah nigga went off on that. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing because it was like very random, like like MOP breaking the rules. I'm like, that's not even. Like, I mean, yeah, like, bro, like, I feel like, 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 this is like, if it was a boxing match, Primo was on some, like, ah, let me just be on some cruise control, you know, I know I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna win this on the scorecards. <laughs> like, nigga gave us a Canelo performance, like, yeah, meanwhile, but it was just, it was still enough to win, but you're like, damn, like, nigga, you could have did this more, did this, that, that. <laughs> And then, meanwhile, RZA, and then one thing with RZA, RZA started off immediately, like, he wasn't fucking around, like, Liquid Swords, I had to listen from me, Bring the Pain, Maria, like, yeah. I, I never literally liked him. 
Well, see, I feel the opposite. I feel the opposite. I feel like Rizzo started off slow, and then as as it progressed, he got better. Like it started, then it started getting tougher. Chris, was, yeah, when, yeah, when, yeah, when Rizzo played Motherless Child, because Motherless Child that's still one of the most banana beats I ever heard in my life. And then of course that damn sample. You know, sometimes I feel even before then once motherless one, child. Ah, damn, and that's that's a dope beat, but I never I never no, once he played like that for Once reason. he played once he played protect once he started with protect your neck, that's when he started like that was when he really started getting in his zone. Everything after that was like, oh shit. Yeah, I would I would Yeah, because he played um Yeah, I feel like Rizza got warmed up faster than Primo. He sure did. Yeah, he did. You know, yeah. Primo was like, you know, like Muhammad Ali in the Ron Lyle fight. <laughs> like, you know, he just, I won't say bullshit and I won't say struggling, but it's just like, you're like, damn, man, you, you, you're you the greatest. You you know you better than this. Like, come on. Like, you know, but you know, he, but you no, know, once Primo got warmed up, you know, then like, like in the middle, like between like 10 and 20 for both of them, that's when that shit started getting, like, okay, this is like, they, they really come yeah. with. You know, unbelievable. Nas is like the yeah, evil. Well, it's Nas forever is like, for Nas is like and unbelievable. Yeah. I'm like, damn. And Nas, then Nas is like is when he took when he took over. And then actually, once once he played, um, I would say once kicking the door played, it was over. Like, yeah, yeah. Because it's like he didn't even need mass appeal, but it, it, I, I I'm not mad at him for playing it. Like, no, he had to play mass appeal. No, he had to play mass appeal. But like that was the mass appeal was the let's go home moment. This is over. Let's pack it up. Now, I mean, to me, it was to me when he played unbelievable and then come clean. I mean, those are two. Those were two beats. I'm like, that was like, oh shit, like that. that no, um, they, now, for me, it was Ten Crack Commandments when he played. Yes. Ten Crack yes. Yeah. that was like, oh shit! And then, but then he played. Um, then Rizzo played Cream, and I'm like, oh shit! Dude. Yeah, yeah. Cream, Cream was the end for real. Like, I mean, that was like, no, no, no. It was Triumph. Triumph was the Cream was. I mean, Cream is probably the best beat out of all their of all the beats that they played. That's in my opinion. And he finally wow. Like, wow! Even out of the beats, damn Primo played. I love I, I love Primo beat, but Cream is legendary, bro. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I mean nah, that's nah, fuck all that. Nah, nah, Cream has probably a top. It's, it's a better than Motherless Child beat. Like it's it's a top B. Like Cream, Cream, nah. classic. No, nah, nah, I'm like good. Cream but is better than like I can't say it's better than Mass Appeal. It's not no, even better than Mass Appeal. easily, easily. That's nah, not, that's nah, even, nah, nah. I don't know about that. Nah, the cream, cream's a better song. Like better the, song, the lyrics, the words, everything. Last like. is a better beat, and and uh, New York State of Mind. New York State of Mind is a better beat to me than Cream. New York State of Mind, and yeah, that's all right. Like like massive. I mean, um, what's gonna call it? What's the shit we were saying? Like. Uh, like, no, because I, I, I first of all, I, 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 like, shit, Triumph got better than New better than New York State of Mind than me. No, but but, but I like to represent more than Triumph. Yeah, and like for Primo, I like Unbelievable and Come Clean more than more, more than the other stuff. Like, you know, especially Unbelievable shit. I, lo- I love Unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable too. And then the crazy stuff is there was a lot of stuff that neither of them played. Like there was yeah, a lot. That's, of- why I, that's why I said like, man, I think a fan could do a better he job. Of- he didn't play, like like Premier, he didn't play Memory Lane. He yes, because uh, Memory Lane is one of the best fucking beats on Illmatic. I, like, I was waiting for that. I um he didn't play, and I, I understand. Well, I mean, I get him not playing it, but I wish he would have played A Z the Color. That's probably one of my favorite beats from. Yeah, um, yeah, that's from, that's from, dope. From, okay. that he, didn't, dope. he didn't play the original by J Rule the Damager. Um, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Grupo Superstar. I was waiting. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, he didn't. He, he didn't that was, that was the beat I was waiting for. I was like, he yo. He played Living Proof, but he didn't play Superstar. He played the wrong group home song. Living. I was like, damn, why this nigga playing this? It's like, yo, Superstar. Like, <laughs> bruh. Like, like there were a couple ah, songs. Too. Like, these niggas played all the B sides and shit. I'm in Sixth Sense, J Ru, The Damager, D Original. He could have played that. The one I was hoping for, because he would have used it on Rizzo, was if he would have used Method Man. But fucking, then I realized somebody on the chat, I didn't realize this because somebody posted up. Somebody on, oh, it was Dan Questlove. Questlove was telling Premier, don't play that that Limp Biscuit song. And I was like, no. Hey, like, sure. that, that's, probably, that's probably that dude's big. Biggest commercial hit, 
<laughs> yeah, I'm together now. With Limp Bizkit and Method Man, I was waiting for that, and it didn't come. Ah, uh, he could. He Why had the hell would they say like, "Don't, don't play that"? Like, and you playing you? Christina Aguilera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was. I mean, they got played fat. And that beat wasn't even bad. I've heard that song before. So uh, I mean, yeah, I could understand them, but it's like, dude, you have way better beat. I was, I was hoping uh, for RZA. I was hoping he would play uh, Dre Slicious, so, uh, Big Pun, uh, Capadon, or, no, Big Pun, Inspector Deck, and Prodigy. I was, I was, cause that was a hard. That beat was hard, but he didn't play that. It was a couple he didn't play. I mean, the beat I he had on um, Pieces of a Man with A Z. Oh yeah, that was I'm another like, one. I'm like, fucking, uh, what, uh, he made the Nutmeg beat on Ghostface album, right? Yes. And then, oh, man, me. that's another one. Like, come on. Like, there, I mean, for me too. There were also like there was a showbiz and AG, like the next level beat, and then there was the KRS. Why? Of course, he didn't use he didn't use more KRS beats. You know, like oh, rapper yeah. and Danger. He didn't use that. Man, you know, them old suits, man. Pass it. You know, he, he could have used way more. I was surprised he didn't use more gangstar beats. He could have just. Bro, he could have. You know my steez is a whole bunch, man. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's, I mean there's, yeah, this set for OC two on the second album. You know that. Yeah. He could have just blew it off the top, off of just straight up um, gangstar um beats like that yeah. alone, taking them off the top. You know what I'm saying? Like it was crazy. He's a lot of yeah, he got some he got some bangers with Freddie Fox on that uh Industry Shakedown album. Yeah. Primo got some tough songs on that. Like it's like Primo, like his catalog is just too fucking yes. sick. Only, like overall, there's, just there's really, there's really only one person that could beat Primo in a in, in that type of battle because he could outlast him in the battle of attrition, and that's Dr. Trey. Australia's catalog is just too and in the league of justice that, or whatever who, who whoever his team of producers and piano players and <laughs> flute players <laughs> and, and Dash Dillingers and uh, yeah. Mel Man, whoever the fuck else, bro. Like Although the one thing I will say is the funny thing is because I was you know, reading the comments on Twitter, it kind of does make me laugh because like they're they're like why didn't he play this but yet that person didn't make the beat like i can't tell you how many times i kept hearing somebody say why didn't why isn't premier playing any up why are you playing any up like bruh he didn't make the any up beat like what are you talking about like i don't know why people, i don't know why people thought he made any up he didn't make any up because niggas ain't knowing all, all the hip hop that well. Yeah, he was like, oh, how come he didn't play? How come he didn't play? He made all the Jay Z songs, but he didn't play Streets Is Watching. Like, nigga, he didn't make Streets Is Watching. That was, that was, that was, yeah. Oh man, yeah, there was, a, yeah, there was definitely a lot of, uh, yeah, there was. I mean, like you could say they were missing, but I mean, I don't know even how much time they had even to prepare, like you know, put all the beats that they wanted to play. Not just missing, it was the selection. Like we just named about like ten songs they could have replaced with way better songs. Yeah, like like in the RZA, like in RZA's case, like that that shit he did for Kanye West, I I didn't like that one. I mean, I don't wait, think wait, which one? Which one? The Gorgeous or New Day? Was that the Dark Fantasy the shit he did on the Dark Fantasy shit? Uh, uh, gorgeous? No, I thought it was Gorgeous. No, nah, nah, it should not be on the list. I don't think it should have been on there. You I mean, talking about the intro for Dark Fantasy? No, I, I, I understand it. I, I can, I, I can't. I'm not gonna disagree with you that it should have been on there, but I'm not gonna be mad that it was on there. Yeah, I was more. I can't be mad on that one. I was more. I was more. You know, I thought it was more egregious of him to put the the Watch the Throne one, New Day, on there. I'm like, th- th- that one wasn't that good, right? Why didn't you play the mystery of chess boxing? Like, you probably could have could have turned the tide if you played more woo stuff. It was a lot That's of stuff. That's what I'm saying. It's like, well, like, he did play a lot. Of, I mean, he played a lot. Of, well, I mean, he played. I mean, he, he, he could have played the whole 36 chambers if he wanted to, but he left nah, most. Nah, nah, but he, he could have played like at least three songs from each album type shit. Like, the 2500. Like. Yes, like, bro, he left a lot of dope beats on the table. Like, I feel like they both did, but, ah, man, but RZA, like, to me, both their selections were kind of off. I, I feel like if you was going to tell somebody, like, watch this battle to see the best of their beats, you would be kind of lying to them. 
it, it's a sample. Like, pretty much, you go. What you got was a sample. Like, I mean, if you're familiar with it, you got like a sample. Because, like I said, in between, like, I mean, they like in between the from like one from like round one to like round twenty eight. Yeah, but that's a but that's a underwhelming sampler, though, man. Like, that's like having a fucking sample cheesecake, a sampler cheesecake, but all the flavors are like some shit you wouldn't want, like <laughs> coconut custard, like. Nah, no, next. Um, <laughs> let me see. What's another bullshit fucking flavor? No one will fucking want uh, Prune flavored cheesecake. <laughs> no fuck will want that. Like, like, imagine have, and then you have once, then you have, oh, the strawberry cheesecake, and then you have maybe a chocolate, then you got another bullshit ass fucking flavor. <laughs> so so now you're like okay well they got strawberry cheesecake but that ain't nothing new like you know it's cool like it's a classic okay chocolate's cool that's a classic but the rest is like some filler like so would you say that's the best that's the best example or sample of fucking cheesecake hell no <laughs> Fuck nah. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. Like these niggas gave you a fraction of their powers. I feel like right. In, in, in the but in a way, that fraction was more than enough to keep people engaged. Like I mean, like like I said, like celebrities were on there. Like I know it, it was because it's live, bruh. But if if you knew ahead of time what they're gonna play, I think it's like you. you it's like, I don't think this is something I will go back to listen to again. Like. I mean, let's listen to it. I mean, I mean, I was, I mean, in between, like, I mean, they were dropping some knowledge in between, like, the conversation, like, you know, given the history. I mean, that's cool, but if, if the selection was better, this should have, like, all time, like, classic. Like, I'd be playing this you know, all. I'm surprised, I'm surprised you didn't play the the intro for the um the J intro um for volume two because that one was hard too. As well, he played the volume one intro, but I always love the volume two intro. But that was kind of an underrated one for me. Nah, the volume one, he ain't even. Play the whole fucking beat like when he he, he should have got to the beat change like that's that's true motherfuckers can't rhyme no more about crime no more because i'm no more. but uh, i mean it was good for hip-hop like i mean if i had to rate it i would probably give it a seven out of one through ten like the whole battle yeah i mean i i, I give it a seven point five only because like i said because it did make me nostalgic, and I kept on saying, you know, yeah. uh, I, I kept on saying that, oh no, what the fuck happened to hip hop? And then the eighty five ers ruined it. Because <laughs> it's like, like they missed too many like obvious choices to me. Like it just needed a few more obvious ones in there, like a few, like a few selection changes, and it would have moved up to like an eight, nine, ten type shit. Like, but, but in this, too but, many fucking misses. But with but in regards to the battles that have already happened, I mean it's not it's not the first DJ battle they have. Like that's that's the one that I really felt. I was like, okay, this is dope. This, this is really this is really Cause dope. Because like, the other ones were popularity contests. Like this one was at least an even match. Like RZA is one of the few dudes who could really kind of go at Primo for beat for beat mm-hmm. because they got the same type of um they share a same fan base. And they both share some longevity, but the thing I, is, I feel I, like uh, huh? I, feel, I feel like Primo has more um, has way more backpack fans than than um, than RZA. But yeah, but they at the end of the day, they work a lot of the artists they shared were on the same tracks and shit. So I, I feel like yeah, yeah, the Primo got more probably has more backpack fans, but at their peak, it was like equal. Well, no, I, I, in my case, I, I think that RZA's highs were higher than Primo's. I don't think, I mean, Primo had had like had a lot of consistency. Like he he fell off after RZA did to me, but RZA's highs like at his peak were higher than Primo's. Like you know, I don't even know no Primo. I can't say that. Yo, it would have showed in the battle, like. No, like, I'm just too well, many, then, too many fucking misses. Like, like Primo, Primo never had a year like 1997, like RZA did. Not one year like that. Because he didn't have a group of elite artists to fucking work with. He, he had... was his group. What are you talking about? He had Gangstar. Nigga, <laughs> no, we're not gonna fucking compare Guru to my fucking Wu Tang Clan. Like Gangstar was still, Gangstar was still. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's, that's like trying to, that's like trying to compare Benny Seagull. 
to the whole no limit roster. Like, the fuck out of here. here. Like, come on. Nah, nah no, nigga. Yeah, yes, old. it is. You can't have that many niggas compared to one dude who's dope, but he's not all time dope. You got, you telling me, like, you I were mean, producing. I mean, bro, RZA has a Grammy of all, of all. Primo doesn't have a fucking Grammy. RZA actually has. Look a- who he had to work with. You, you comparing the nigga who raps and fucking is around legendary rappers. He got Method Man, Ghostface, Raekwon. Even if you just say that, Inspector Dead, you got four of them niggas off rip right there. And Primo didn't have, Primo was out, Primo was there longer before Reza came onto the scene. You know what I'm saying? Gu- Primo can bro, he had Guru. Primo had consistently dope rappers. I don't know what you're thinking that he did. He had consistently dope rappers. But not like a pool. Like, not like, no, oh, let me just go to the next no, room. No, no, he, 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 he didn't have the age of time in the adventure. It's just in his back pocket. Bruh, you comparing one dude who could just go into the next room and grab a fucking all-time great rapper to a guy who... <laughs> Has to make some phone calls to come do a feature on his above average dope rapper group. It's the same thing. I don't know what you're saying. It's not the same. Dude, you can't even compare Group Home to fucking Killer Army. Yeah. Well, Group Home probably had more success <laughs> than Killer Army. Nah, fuck out of here. What the bro. fuck are you talking about, nigga? What the fuck are you talking about? Killer Group Army Home? had way better music. Group Home had the bigger hits. What is she talking about? Yeah, yeah and Primo did more with less. Like, because <laughs> let's, let's be honest, nobody was listening to nobody. Nobody was listening to Group Home for the rhymes. Those rhymes yeah, were yeah, yeah. exactly. And, but, and, like and way, like said, bro, think about it. Then. Kill Em All got classic songs and, and albums, bro. Like, even if you don't say albums, like they got way better. Even. Even the, you could say Wu Tang Jr. has fucking damn better artists than fucking um, Guru, bro. Like, I wouldn't even compare Killer Army to Guru. Like, I don't even know why you compare Killer Army in the first place. I mean, I mean, Shaheen. Because we're looking at because we're looking at the pools of talent he had to work with. Yeah. We're looking at Guru and Group Home compared to fucking damn. Yeah. <laughs> Grave Diggers, Wu Tang Clan, yeah. Sons of Man. Uh, why, why, are you, why are you doing Sons of Man? I don't even understand. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's not a good look when you have people that say, "Oh well, Primo made these. Primo made these rappers." Like that actually is a point point four um, premiere. Whereas RZA had all these dope rappers on their own. Whereas like you have people that still. You like, had to get the solo success from the solo rappers. Like people remember. That's why he has like the songs. Like you're gonna say, okay, nah, it's Memory Lane. You know, shit like that. Cause he he had to branch out. Like, yeah, I'm, talking about, like yeah, I'm talking about the people that he was like with, like that that he was with consistently. Like J. Rue fell off once he stopped getting premieres beats. Yes, yes, yeah. Nah, nah. I, I feel y'all understand what you're saying. My, my bad. People, and I mean, and I don't mean to disrespect him. You know, rest in peace to Dex. I fucks with him. But a lot of people when he was alive thought Guru was nasally and boring. Like, and that. Yes. Crazy. Yeah. So, hey, I thought, that's why I said he was above average. Like, you can't say he was whack. You know, he was dope, but you can't compare him working with him compared to fucking them the nine Very members true. of the Wu Tang yeah. Clan. <laughs> No, no, no. Like I said, I mean, I, I all have to do is just look at their, their, their damn careers. Like, RZA fell off before Primo did, but like I said, RZA's highs were high. Primo never... I, I can't say that Primo, because Primo's, Primo's eyes was spread out. He big in their prime. He, not, he did not have a no, high... No, as no, as no. And to, to prove my point, to prove my point, um, most people would say, I'll use Ghostface, for example. Ghostface is his, most people. The consensus is that is that his best album was Supreme Clientele, and RZA only produced a couple of songs on there. Like only <laughs> he, 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 he produced maybe like half of it, or maybe not even half. And that album was still his, considered a classic, dope as hell. It's like his later albums that were all dope didn't really have as much RZA on there as as you know as Iron Man. So like it's well, just thing, lasted just for like a good three years and then he gave you, you know, glimpses, you know, down the line with other people further in the brand with Primo. He gave you so many classics from a broad range of artists all within mixed mixed in within a whole era. 
where you didn't really see a major drop off. You saw the artist drop off before Primo dropped off. Basically, yeah, that's what I said. exactly. That's, that's exactly what I said. He fell off a lot. He fell off a lot like later than RZA. RZA after after Wu Tang Forever was very spotty, especially on the second round of, of Wu. So how are we gonna compare uh, a two a two year peak? This nigga comparing two years. You talk about four. Ninety three to ninety seven was RZA's peak, and RZA's peak ended at ninety seven. Like nigga, so you say Primo so never so had a peak. Like no one will say that Primo had an upper peak like RZA did. But Primo had classics within that scene. Oh term. no, ninety ninety four was a dude. And I, if you compare ninety seven RZA to ninety four Primo, it's pretty damn close. I think ninety four. You can compare, like, compare ninety four RZA and ninety four Primo, and that's still and they still both. Uh, like, and, one, and one guy had a legendary rap group. Another guy, he just had a dope artist. Gangstar is still a group. I don't understand. Where you, like, you're trying, you a, a group that he's made. He's still, he still, it's still a group. Uh, and Guru. Primo, I mean, Primo still, did he get them gold albums? A gold claps? He did. He sold. You know, that's Look what, what artists he had, my nigga. Yeah, like, yeah, oh my yeah, and, 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 like you're trying and, to make, you're trying oh, to make it numbers oh, thing oh, when okay. RZA and, and stuff like that. Though. And okay, and to counter that, to counter that argument, you could say the same thing about oh, oh, Eric B got all them plaques from Rakim. Oh, like we like, like come on now, like. I don't, I don't mean to disrespect Eric B, but come on, let's keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> they do say Eric like, B and Rakim. Yeah. Like, like this, this is the thing. Like, it's the same way with the whole. To the lesser extent, it's with the Scorch and um um the uh, Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh had cash money, but he wasn't able to branch out to a whole, a whole bunch of other artists like like Scott Storch. Who Scott Storch? He was aligned with all the super. Like, he was aligned with all the superstars in the game. So. That's no, a matchup like part, that. The funny part is when Manny got out of his um, cash money bag and did stuff with other people, shit was dope. Like he was versatile. Yeah. He just stayed too much in the cash. Because I think because he still, because even then his selection wasn't even good like that. He has way better beats than than what he played. Like that's what I'm saying. It's like I think like the fans would be better damn selectors of the yeah. fucking beats man. let's be honest Manny Fresh is a way better producer than Scott Storch like oh, of course but but it turned into a popularity contest when you got niggas talking about yeah play that Beyonce song like bruh <laughs> why would why would you even fucking have Manny I would like to me RZA Manny Fresh is a better battle well, because which is both funny. We are to compare those two all the time and ask that was the biggest debate like on the forums oh who's better RZA or Manny and all the people from the south would say Manny and everybody from the east would say RZA it revolved, that's been an ongoing debate for years but the thing is but at least they I didn't both, even know there was a debate between those two <laughs> but at least they're both yeah. aligned with a group of, of, of artists that were dope and successful it's not no fucking Manny Fresh versus um um a guy who just had Gangstar you know he had Primo or, or 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 you know rock him or something. It's like it's an even match. It's an even matchup because you got two camps yeah. of artists and one producer who worked with two sets of legends. Whatever. I think a better I think a better matchup or like for for, for what LB is saying. I think a more comparable matchup would have been Premier versus Pete Rock. But this is the thing. I don't. I, there's nothing wrong with the uh, the Guru. I'm sorry, uh, the Primo and RZA matchup. I think RZA's one of the few producers who can match up with Primo. Like after RZA, you have to go like Dr. Dre level. Like somebody who's really had longevity in in, in, in hip hop. And if you go to other dudes, I mean, P Rock, of course, P Rock is up there. No, P But after that, it's like you you can't use uh uh. Have it fucking with- Neptunes or Pharrell because you're gonna it's gonna turn into an R and B battle. Yeah. Maybe- Neptunes actually uh, Neptunes actually has some actual heat. Yeah. yeah. yeah but then you gotta go, you, you gotta put them against a producer who's the same type of shit like like Nep like uh, yeah. Neptunes and Timberland like Pharrell and Timberland if you want. And I and I've always said about Timbo like I mean I've never felt his production like that especially on the rap shit like R and B whatever but the rap shit I've never really felt. Like- no, no, 
he got some dope rap. Timbo, Timbo's shit uh, is still still going. So Patty, no, I, 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 I would love to see a Timbo versus Neptune's battle because I think that's because Neptune. But, but here we go again, like, t- like Timbaland. He doesn't have no like you comparing fucking clips. You're gonna get into a clips versus Magoo argument. <laughs> You see what, but but at least they both had some mainstream success. Where, meaning Timberland, he had other superstar artists. Neptune's had other superstar artists. But if you had to just base it off the pr- pr- primary rap beats and their groups, then you know it's gonna go into like okay. Yeah, it's gonna be Timberland McGrew versus you know Neptune's with Ch- with you know, Pharrell and Chad, the nerd stuff, which I absolutely hated. <laughs> But they had some dope production on some of those songs. Well, well Tim Blue produced a lot of Missy stuff too. Yeah. So I think I think that'd be a good matched up battle. Like, you know. So, but just, yeah. you know, the the Scott Storage Manny Fresh, I was just whoever made that match up was, you know, was like just off or some shit. Cause I would have never <laughs> matched those two up. Like the fuck? <laughs> and, and it's like some we yeah, need some type of guidelines for the damn the, 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 these battles, like, cause niggas is just adding themselves. You, you know, you play piano on the beat and shit. Now it's you know you the beat maker. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Scott Storch, fucking piano man. Like, like, what is it like? Uh, Scott Storch was always was also was oh, also I just, I just did a little bit of the percussion and oh, it's my beat. Like, yeah, nah, like I feel like you got a fucking damn make like 80 percent of the beat or some shit you can't just be the guy who played the saxophone that's like nas nas dad claiming the damn life's a bitch beat because he played the, uh saxophone <laughs> he well that trumpet though he did the trumpet yeah yeah, like, yeah but you ain't gonna though. say he made the fucking beat yeah no, but uh um... yeah then, 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 it, it, like, he added a great part, but I'm not gonna say, yeah, you know, Nas, Nas dad, you know, made the beat, you know. I mean, I mean, I did like the trumpet, but I mean, I, I, was, I was a former trumpet player. I, I did appreciate that trumpet though at the end. <laughs> yeah, it, it kills it. it, it it's, it's dope, but I mean, like, are we, are we, like, uh, if, if, if they have a beat battle for uh, the, the fathers, is he gonna use that? Well, you know, I did this song, like. <laughs> yeah, your son and his friend damn spit legendary verses over that beat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at least, I mean, at least compared to the other ones, like I mean, at least this one uh, wasn't a popular wasn't a popular contest like you know Scott Storch and Manny Fresh or um, wasn't there a Little John versus T Pain one too? Um, yes, I think there was. Yes, yeah. there was. Yeah, you know, I didn't catch that. You know, um, Little John one to me. Little John had some a lot of crunk shit, but and he missed out a lot of shit. There was so much stuff that he didn't play. I, I want to see more rapper versus battle. Like, yeah, like, 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 like hip hop battles. Like, I don't know, I don't know if this is true or not because I was on Twitter and maybe this was just him suggesting it or something. Talib Kweli was saying like, do a rock him versus Big Daddy Kane. That would be so dope because we never like putting those two together and having them go song for song. Oh my god, that would be crazy. <laughs> I, I like to see that shit. Like they should do, you know, match up, like even match up the artists more on some regional shit. Like yo, like have just different types of artists match up and, and go song for song. You know, because when I look at when I hear beat, you know, contests or beat matchups and shit, I'm looking at the beat itself, like not how big the song is, like or how. Yeah, that, was where, that was where the, the line became a little blurry, because we yeah, like it's going to turn into a popularity contest or a hit hit factory, like you know, which, which is the colder beat? Oh yeah, I mean that is true. That is true. It's just very blurry. Yeah, that's why it's like niggas had to cut. Like you gotta set that shit off right. Like have some real fucking like standards and shit. But I, I like how you know. I still thought this battle was dope. You know, I gave it a seven. You know, it's if you never if yeah, someone you know, listen to hip hop, I would suggest it. Like yo, fuck with that. I mean, you because you'll you'll get some bangers in there. Ain't like, no doubt. But yeah, I, I don't think the, I mean I don't think even they will be able to make their top twenty because like I said even if they come up with a different top twenty there's always gonna be people like us that be like well we could have played this we could have inserted this I mean 
I mean, unless they unless they want to go for hours, because they went for two hours for that shit. They went even longer than there was, than there was Imagine some Imagine two hours and you miss out all that fucking heat. That's what I'm talking about. It's the selection, like. Like the platinum plus over over danger is like night and day. Like, like if you think about it. If, if we had to th- think about it, we had the damn play classic songs opposed to another damn podcast doing the same thing. And do you, there's certain songs that you know all of us gonna agree on that you know that's gonna get there, and then then there's gonna be some that is gonna be like, I right, yeah, none of us gonna fuck with this one. Like I know somebody, he had to run that list by somebody on some like. All right, so what you think about this one? Yeah, that one. That, 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 I mean, like, <laughs> but I know somebody saw that list and, and unless he was on some like, fuck it, this is what I'm choosing, nigga. Look, like, there you go. Cause nah, I don't know, man. Like, two hours in, it's like I feel like you only gave us forty percent of your your catalog. <laughs> Yeah, or your, your, your prime or whatnot. Yeah, no, it was funny because I mean, at least with the Rizzas, because I know, like, pretty much he didn't play a whole lot of post 97 beats. That, that's for damn sure. And, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, he, I mean, gra- I mean, granted, I, I think I'm going to be actually like Gravel Pit. I actually like yeah, I fucks with Gravel Pit. I, I was surprised he played that. Gravel, gravel Pit is all right, but I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I, as I mentioned, I heard people, I saw the comments, like, people were like, oh, gravel pit, because, you know, because you know, it was a little bit too commercial for, you know, for most Wu people, you know, for most Wu fans, because it wasn't grimy, even though they were spitting on that shit, you know, but, um, yeah, and, yeah, and that's the one thing, that's why I said, like, Riz is high, because, like, once he, once he fell off, like, a level, he, he never really recovered, you know, I mean, he was spotty, he was spotty after 97, that's for damn sure, um, you know, whereas like I said, Primo took a little longer before. I think I think Primo is just no one's no one just used him anymore. Like I think the last major artist to really use him was like Ludacris. Oh uh, yeah, but because hip hop yeah. kind of moved on. In career, um, I mean, um, he has two albums with with Royce the Five Nine. Yeah, Royce is not really that top level rapper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean this. She, but I mean, yeah, it's yeah, Royce has a, a Eminem as, a, a association. Really, that, that's that's you know. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, he's made. that's not the type of dude that's going to extend the guy like Primo is what he's trying to say. Well, that, right, that, yeah. that, that boom beat was fire. Um, yes, yes. I'm glad he played that. Like, I was hoping he would play um the hip hip hop. Well, um, Royce Five Nine Hip Hop. I fucked with that beat too, but Boom was good too, so I can't complain. I feel like Boom a better beat. Like, like if he'd have did hip hop, I'd have felt like that's the same thing. I, I would have felt the same thing like when he did Danger instead of Platinum well, actually, Plus. Actually, no, no, no. Um, I get what you're saying though, because actually, no, no. Boom. Maybe to me, this is where the line is being blurry, because Boom to me is a better beat, but hip hop to me is a better song. So, I mean, but the lines are being blurred a little bit. There. Yeah. Yeah, Cause I feel like if, if if Primo would just play his best beats, you would get like you would have all types of obscure songs, and, but you'll be yeah. nodding your head like, "God damn, this shit hard." Yeah. Like, yeah, you hear you know, Afro Rule, you hear all types of shit. Yeah, because some of his best beats were the were the, were the B sides and, and the the, the non single one. The not well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Primo was the king of the B sides in the back in the nineties. You know. Yeah. I mean, shit, Unbelievable was a B-side. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, but it, it was a good battle. Um, I don't know if there's a next battle I will, I'm looking forward there, to. As long as, we, as long as we have this pandemic, there will be one. Just, we don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I want to see, see Pete Rock get into a producer battle. That, that is, Pete Rock is my favorite producer. Him and Preem are my favorites. I want to see Pete Rock get into a uh, producer battle. Maybe there be some battle. I forgot who it was. Because I know there was someone else with like a Teddy. It's supposed to be Teddy Riley and somebody for a battle. Babyface. Yeah, I think. Yeah, but I think um, Babyface has like the Corona or some shit like that. So really? yeah, yeah. Damn. Y'all seen some post or some shit he had where he said he recovered from it. Yeah. That he planned on doing the battle though. And that and that now be that that's the old school shit like you know Babyface and Teddy Riley because I mean they had, they all have classic. I mean that would be a different that would be an interesting battle too actually. Like, oh, the cool I was matched up though like yeah. that's, that's a matchup you know. 
the one thing I did like about um, at, the, at the end with Premier and uh, Rizzo was that they started like playing unreleased stuff. Like Rizzo yes. started playing unreleased, um, unreleased. Uh, what's his name? Um, God. Unreleased. No, um, dude from. Um, Oh, what's his name from Brooklyn? Um, he only played one. I mean, which one? Because I mean, again, because he play, he, start, he started off with Liquid Swords. I mean, Rizzo, yeah. Liquid no, at, the, at the end, no, well, but no, at the end, they was both playing like unreleased. Yeah, like, not Premier, so was playing, Premier was playing unreleased. What? No, Tanaja wasn't unreleased. That was on the Lost Tapes. We heard that. No, he Rizzo was saying that was unreleased, but I don't think none of the shit that. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, that was that wasn't unreleased because we heard that on the Lost Tapes. Like, what is he talking about? Um, I guess, but see, that's the thing. It's like for him, it probably been unreleased for so long. Like, it probably was meant for another album, but then if it's on the Lost Tapes, he probably was like, "That's not my shit," you know? The fuck am I on the Lost Tapes? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He didn't even know about that. Yeah. Um, but oh, who was, oh man, I can't, why am I? Why am I not? Free? Oh, Joey Badass. That's who he was playing. Unreleased Joey Badass. I fucks with Badass. Yeah, I fuck with Joey Bass too. I'm just trying to remember, did I even hear any of that? Yeah, yeah. 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 you shouted out. You shouted out Joey Badass. Yeah. And Premier was playing unreleased Scarface. Like, yeah. That yeah, was yeah. Joey, like the unreleased stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Like, I feel like if, like, I guess if you could do something new with the battles, give like a time frame, like a, like, like, yo, we're going to play songs or beats from this era. Like, we're going to say, who's king in the 90s? Or, um, you know, shit like that. Or got the best. Uh... But, yeah, you know, I just feel like they could get, you know, they keep doing it. They could get more creative with this shit. That's all I'm saying. Right. Yeah. And then, I mean, like I said, you know, we'll, we'll see you what happens. That's unreleased shit. <laughs> yeah. Like I, said, I mean, just like I said, we just hope that more producers actually do this as long as the pandemic is going, just they they, they keep doing it, you know, because like I said, I mean, it's, it's either way, it's good for hip hop to actually know. I mean, if you have the current shit and then you have the older shit and then you have the older, older shit, like, you know, like a Teddy Ryan baby face type of deal, you know, so um, if the, hopefully that does come to fruition. So you're going to need to do one with the artists and just have like the best 16s. And it's like you go verse for verse, like. Yeah, but they could play a verse, and then he play a verse for one of his songs, and then he just keep going. Like, who who dropped better verses? I don't nominate Jada Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But uh, P, what did you actually give the battle? Because I think we you, you didn't your rating. Said, no, no, I said an eight. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so seven, seven and a half, eight. Although, although, you guys, LB didn't tell me, like, nah, nigga, whole numbers, nigga. <laughs> yeah, whole numbers, nigga. Yeah, seven or eight. Which one is it, bro? Yeah, I'm going to go with eight. I think it was P then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Seven, eight, won't you anyway? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the, God, that's the God number, son. So, you know, be, you know. You got you got that. That's you. Right? I, I was born on the seventh, so don't give me none of that. <laughs> I'm all about the number seven. <laughs> My birth month is seven too. So yeah. <laughs> God degree, you know what I'm saying? So so yeah. So yeah, more of these battles, and we and we'll definitely you know as if, as long as they get enough attention, you know we'll definitely do some future episodes on those. Uh, but yeah, no, it was good for hip hop, and then you know we just hope that producers can learn from these previous battles and maybe just come a little different, you know, to really showcase their, um, you know, their, you know, their history, you know, their, you know, the legendary, you know, their legendary talent, and everything like that. So you know, we're not ending like, yeah, you should have played this, should have played that. <laughs> 